while he was up on the mountain, Israel, God's people, rose up to play. You would think while he was on the mountain that Israel would have been prayerful, waiting for the messenger of God to come. But instead, they played. It isn't because they didn't know no better. They got content with Moses' absence. Moses wasn't dead. He was simply absent in the presence of the Lord, getting much needed information from God so Israel can do better than they were in serving him. The hand of God, the power of God was writing the commandments for the prophet. You don't need commandments where there's already order. So the commandments was a necessity to govern God's hard head, stubborn, rebellious people. If they were cooperative, obedient, hear me good, then you would need commandments. Commandments is of a necessity when the people are out of control. Like a father and a mother. If their house is out of control, they got to bring in law. Thank God to put all the children back in check. God sent Moses, or as the Arabs call him, Musa, to be between God and Israel. In other words, he was an Old Testament form of mediator. Give me Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5. And at verse 5. Hear this. I stood Moses talking by God's permission. I stood. I stood between the Lord. Between the Lord. And you. And Israel. At that time. That's what a mediator is. One that stands between. Israel needed Moses. Israel was so rebellious, God got tired of them. So tired, he was going to kill them. Moses went to God. I'm not going to kill them, these people. If you destroy these people, the Egyptians or the enemies are going to say, all you did was bring them out to destroy them. So Moses told God, repent. Repent. Didn't he? That's right. Didn't he say so? Now therefore, in Follow the me. book of Exodus chapter 32, and we'll start reading at verse 9. Read quick. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. I have seen this people. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Well, God's here. You are just as stiff-necked now as Israel was then. The churches, I want to soak you a little, is just as hard here now as they were then if not more so. I marvel at Israel hard-headedness because they witnessed things none of us did. You probably will get terrified and scared if the whole body of water opened up and separated. You would tremble if you had a cup of orange juice and the orange juice separated. Arms you just separate right in front of you. Never mind a sea, but an entire body of water 
separate enemy in back of you. Glory to God and dry land in front of you. God gave them quails and melons and so many things he'd done for them. But just like people are, never satisfied. I have seen this people. Do you hear God talking? Ex Exodus 32 and verse 9. What is it? I have seen this people. I've seen them. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked. Stiff-necked. One scripture says you're stiff-necked and uncircumcised of heart and ears. You do all the ways resist the Holy Ghost. Talking in the New Testament, then refer them to the old. He said you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Even after Jesus died and rose and ascended above all heavens, the spirit of the people were the same. Hear this. I have seen this people. And what? And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. It's a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone. That my, what? Now, therefore, let me alone. Hmm. Hmm. He knew what Moses had in mind. Moses, I know you love these hard head folk, but I got something in mind I want to do to them. And because I know all things, I want to tell you, Let leave me alone before you bother me. <laughs> I'm not even going to wait till you bother me. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Now, therefore, let me alone. Let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot let against them. Let me have my way. And that I may consume them. Mm. Can you imagine getting God that angry? If God consumed you, that means he got to a point where he was willing to make you non-existent. You know, if your body is consumed in the flames, there's nothing left. You are non-existent. Hear me good, you that are here, you that are listening. Now Think of it. The scripture says God is long-suffering to us, very tolerant, very patient. So how could a people push the emotions of God so great until God want to wipe your existence off the earth. How could you take God's patience and push him until he's willing to consume you off the face of the earth. That's something to think about. That's right. Because it ain't nothing and nobody more patient than God. <laughs> That's right. God is the perfect and fallible example of patience. Listen. Now therefore let me alone. Let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot against my them. My wrath may have its way. And that I may consume them. That I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought God, the Lord his God. God ain't stuck. No. He said, I make of thee, of thee a great nation. He can take away one and bring another. Right. That's the Lord's doing. That's right. If someone... Leave the truth, God will bring in many to replace that one. That's right. If a preacher leaves, God will bring some more. That's right. Everybody, hear me good, can be replaced. As you hear what I said. Someone said, Pastor Jennings, does that include you? Why, certainly. Moses died, come on Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. What but, more can you ask? But, here, here. Judas died, come on Matthias. Everybody can be replaced. 
Well, are you listening to what I'm telling you? Listen good now. Psalm 75 and verse 6. Yes. Psalm 75 and verse 7. What is it? But God is the judge. God is the judge. He put he it down one. Put down one. And setteth up another. And he can do it to anybody, anytime. All right, let's go back to where you were. Let's finish up. Back in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 10. Follow me. Now therefore let me alone. Let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot against them. That my them. wrath may wax hot against them. And that I may consume them. That I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. Yes. And Moses besought the Moses Lord his God. Moses besought the Lord his God. And said, Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Yes. Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power uh -huh. and with a mighty hand. Yes. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for the, mischief? You, listen, you're going to give the Egyptians something to talk about. If you do what you got in mind, they're going to talk about you, Lord. That's right. That's right. Moses, you know, that's a beautiful thing. When you got such a relationship with the creator of the universe, you can have dialogue with him. That's right. I mean direct. That's right. How about to say God is too great to talk to man? He ain't never told you that. No. No, he, never said. he talked to the prophets. Don't you hear the prophets saying? The word of the Lord came unto me, saying. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. What? And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Wouldn't you like to have a relationship like that with you and God? As a man speaketh unto his friend. Wait a minute. How was Moses and God relationship? As a man speaketh. Read the whole thing. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. And the Lord spake to Moses face to face. The face, and how was the camaraderie going on? As a man, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Talk to a friend. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a man speaketh speak unto his friend. To a friend. That's right. You know, you can read what Moses said to God, right. but that don't mean. Your relationship with God, you can say it to him. That's true. I'll show you what I mean. Let's get the dialogue between Moses and God. Come back on, in, son. Back in Exodus 32 and verse 11. Follow me. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against why thy people? Why are you angry with your people? Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Yes. With great power and with a mighty hand. Uh -huh. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say. If you do what you got in mind, you're going to give the Egyptians something to talk about. And they're going to talk about you, Lord. For, for mischief did he bring them out. Wait a minute. They're going to blame you for mischievous conduct. That's right. They're going to blame you, Lord, for mischievous conduct. For mischief did for he bring mischief. them out. They're going to say for mischief, you brought them out. To slay them in the mountain. You just brought them out to kill them. And to consume them from another the face word, of the they earth. Gonna, if you do what you got in mind, they're going to misinterpret what you've done and say you've done something, they're going to lie on you. That's right. That's Don't right. give them a reason to lie on you, Lord. That's right. Glory to God. Hear this. Turn from thy fierce wrath. What? Turn from thy fierce wrath. He's talking to the Lord now. Mm. The same I am that I am. The great Jehovah. He's talking to your Lord. <laughs> That's right. Same one that made heaven and earth and the sea and all things therein. Right. He's telling the Lord. Turn. From thy fear. Turn. Rest. Change your mind. Hmm. Wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. How in the world can God turn? He said, I'm a God that changed not. For this cause, uh, Jacob won't be consumed. God can't change. Yes, he can. But he don't change from being God. Right. <laughs> That's it. Moses said to God, do what? Turn from thy fierce wrath. Turn. When you turn, that means change. That's right. 
Turn from your fierce wrath. And repent. What? And repent. Be sorry. Of this evil against thy people. Show compassion. I want you to turn, and not only am I asking you to turn, I'm asking you to repent. repent. Show remorse of how you feel. Let's see about their relationship, how good do they get along. I'll say, where you at? What happened? Remember Abraham, Isaac, Lord, and Israel. Lord, I'm not done talking. Remember. You know all things, but I want you to reflect. Israel didn't just pop up. You the one made promises. Before you formed the people, you made promises. Remember Abraham, hey, Isaac, Lord, and Israel. Do you remember Abraham? You know, the one that you laid circumcision law to? Do you know Isaac? Isaac. Do you not know Jacob? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's Israel. Thy servants. Your servants. To whom thou swearest by thy you own self. May a pack. Glory to God. You made an agreement. You made a contract. You made a promise. You made an oath. To whom thou swearest by thine own self. You swear by your own self. And said us unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. You complain about the people, but you told them. I will multiply your you, seed. You, you, you're going to multiply the seed. As the stars of heaven. It's going to be so many, it's going to be like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken. All this land that I spoke to you. I will give unto I'm your seed. Give it to the people. And they shall inherit it forever. They're going to inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. He turned. Hallelujah. He didn't change from being God. Mm. But that's the relationship between Moses and God. Right. It's like a man talk to his friend. To his friend. Mine, can you imagine to be so close oh. and on good terms with the Lord? That when you talk to them, your relationship is so well mm. that he know you will never turn on him. That's right. Imagine God having enough confidence in you that he know regardless of what he allowed to happen, you won't turn on him. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God, you'll be committed to him down to the last breath of your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the relationship with Moses and God was wonderful. Moses was up on the mountain and Israel in their thinking, Moses was gone just too long. And when the people saw that Moses delayed. Give chapter and verse. Exodus chapter 32 and now we're at verse 1. Hear this. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. You know some folk can't wait till you're gone. It's like some children. They can't wait till mama or daddy is gone before they tear the house up. <laughs> That's right. Sneak friends in the house, sneak them in there to spend the night, sneak to have a house party, bring stuff in the house that they wouldn't dare bring if their parents was there. That's the way it is in church today. That's true. In their mind, Jesus is delaying too long to come back. That's right. And because he didn't come back yet, look at the amount of garbage and trash that have came in churches around the world because they feel as though the Lord is taking so long until some concluded that the coming back of the Lord is a long-term myth. Knowing this first, hear this in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 3. Let's get Bible for the way the people thought then and the same thought is now centered around the coming of the Lord. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers. What? 
That's there shall come in the last days scoffers. These are the last days here. And the Bible is giving us a heads up. Knowing this first. I want you to know this first that shall come in the last days. Scoffers. Scoffers. Walking after their own lust. Walking after their own lust, their own opinion, their own logic. And saying, where is the this promise is of his coming? Say. Where, where is the promise? I told you. Right. Is the promise of his coming. Of his coming. For since the fathers fell asleep. Since our fathers died. All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Do you hear? And this is the New Testament and people thought like this. That's right. And people are saying it now. Where is the promise Have of his coming? Have you ever met people? Oh, you tell them the Lord is coming. You know what they say? Oh, man, my mother and father, I've been hearing that since I was a child. I don't believe that no more. That's what they say. I've been hearing that since I was a child. I don't believe that no more. Even preachers have turned against the coming of the Lord. That's right. But the Lord saw the way you thought. Knowing this first. And saw the way you will think. That's right. And he had it documented so when your foolish heart come along, he already got a catalog in the book of truth. That's right. Do you hear it? Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers. There shall come in the last day scoffers. Walking after their own lust. Walking after their own lust mean going after their own opinion, their own way of thinking. And saying, saying, where is the promise of his coming? This is the way many of you think you're watching. That's right. Oh, my mama told me about Jesus coming. I don't believe that no more. That's right. Things are still, if Jesus is coming while the world like it is, nothing have changed. That's right. I don't believe that. That's right. God is so wise. He knew you would think that way. Amen. So he put it in the mirror. <laughs> That's right. So when you read this scripture, viewer, you see the reflection of your own self. That's right. All of you that think this way, this was written thousands of years. Glory to God on high. That's right. Before you were born. So when you come. That's right. This is your mirror. That's right. This is the reflection of how foolish you think. Amen. And this is the reflection of how you feel. And saying, and where is this is the reflection of how you are. That's right. Saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of the coming of Christ? Where is that promise at? For since the fathers fell asleep, since the fathers been dead, all things continue as they the were from the beginning of the creation. From the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Ah, uh, notice. Focus on the language of the scriptures. For this, this is a different kind of ignorance. That's right. That's right. It isn't that they really were ignorant. This was a false ignorance. For the Bible said, for this they willingly are ignorant of. What you mean willingly? Street terms play the dumb role. That's right. In other words, you know better because you know the information is right. But the reason why we're complaining about where is this coming is because in our mind, he should have been here. That's right. Who are we to say when the Lord should come? That's right. That's right. Viewers, God's delay is for your mercy. That's right. Jesus' delay is an act of mercy. The longer he takes, the more time we have to clean up our spots, hallelujah, our wrinkles, to correct our crooked ways. You that are watering down the second coming of Christ. And that's what it is. He came as an act of mercy to die in the flesh for us. This time his coming is an act of mercy and judgment. 
to save those out of this present evil world that would obey his precepts and to bring eternal punishment to those that have rejected his precepts. So you that are ignorantly, willingly ignorant. This they thou willingly are ignorant of. they are willingly ignorant of. That by the word of God the heavens were of old. By the word of God the, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Hold it. How can the earth be in water, out of water. and out of water? How can that happen at the same time? Are you listening? And the days of, Mo, of Noah, when Noah obeyed God and they was in the ark, the earth was in the water and out of the water at the same time. When it was out of the water, someone said, how is that, Pastor Jenner? The earth was covered. The whole earth was underwater. Land and the human family and the animal, the beast, all that didn't go into the ark was in the water. Flesh is earth. Noah, his household, and the beast that went into the ark they were out of the water because they are earth. So the earth that was living was them that was in the ark. That's when earth was out of the water. The earth that perished, which ceased to live, that's when earth was in the water. Are you listening? What is it? Whereby the world that then was... The world! That then was being overflowed with water perish. Being overflowed with water perish. But the heavens and the earth which are now. But the heavens and the earth which are now. By the same by word. By that same word. Are kept in store. Are kept in store. Reserved, reserved unto, unto fire. What? Reserved unto fire. He ain't going to destroy the world with the flood no more. Reserved unto fire. What? Against the day of judgment. He didn't say it won't be no more floods. But the whole earth won't be destroyed with water no more. That's right. Something worse is coming. Reserved unto fire. Against Notice the language of the scriptures. It says by the same word. But the heavens and the earth which are now. What? By the same word. Hold it. Noah preached along with Methuselah. God gave man 120 years to get himself right. Man wouldn't do it. So here you had a message given to the servants of the Lord that they may have clear time to prepare themselves to escape the judgment of God. As it was in Noah's day, so shall it be when the Son of Man come. God is sending men and he's given the men that he sends the same, same message. That's right. Warning the world. That same word. Same word. Did you hear what he said? But the heavens and the earth which are now. Which are now. By the same word. By the same. Hallelujah. By the same word. Are kept in store. Are kept in store. Reserved. The word of the Lord got heaven and earth in reserve. Reserved. For fire. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Do you hear this? But beloved, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Now, viewers, and you that are here, let's go back to Moses in Exodus. Back in Exodus chapter 32. I want to get all of that and show you one. a clearer picture of the stage of their whole religious world. That's right. Listen good. Back in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 1. All right. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, yes. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And what? And said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before uh, us. Aaron, Moses is taking too long. Notice, they went to his kin. That's right. That's what you do, Bishop. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, make good. Go ahead. 
You that are here, have you ever been in a church that had some solid standards and the father was about to die, the old bishop, and besides trying to see who's qualified, his focus was leave the church to his children. So old man Bishop died That's right. and the son took over. And when the son took over, now you can't even recognize the place to even be called a church. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. You bishops that do this, you're more focused on keeping your name as a legacy. And where you should be focused on the people's souls being saved. Many have come to me, Pastor Jennings, which one of your sons going to take over after you? None. <laughs> That's right. None, I said. That's right. That's right. This is not the church of Jennings. Right. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You sit around and wait on none of my sons. <laughs> That's right. If any of my sons wanted to minister, they would have to go through the same process. Amen. Go before the evaluation board. What am I saying like telling them, I'm Pastor Jenny's son. I wouldn't care if you Gabriel's first cousin, if possible. Amen. And I would expect that evaluation team to be just as vigorous and brutal. Don't look at his name. That's right. That's right. But my son up as a preacher ain't no favor to the church. Right. It is qualification that helps the church. That's where you preachers fail. And many of you that are watching, you don't even recognize the church you're in. It used to be apostolic. Now, you don't know what it is. Hmm. You don't baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you claim you got the Holy Ghost without speaking in tongues. Now the women preachers are taking over the churches. Your bishop that died used to didn't ordain women, but his no good, rotten, spoiled brat son <laughs> done now ordained his wife. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Are you listening? That's right. So Israel changed That's right. at the absence 